this talk, I will summarize a recent paper on quantum algorithm structural fluctuation theorems with emphasis on the problem of preparing thermal or Gibbs states on quantum computers. This is joint work with a number of colleagues from Los Alamos National Laboratory. First, I will explain the problem in detail and then explain why this is important. We're going to assume for simplicity that we're working with n-qubit systems and that we are given a Hamiltonian H1 that models the interactions among those qubits. Also an inverse temperature, a non-negative parameter beta, and an approximation error, a non-negative parameter epsilon, that you can think of this epsilon as being small. The goal is to construct a quantum circuit or a sequence of unitary operations that prepares a mixed quantum state of those n qubits, which are called tau one, such that it is epsilon way away in trace distance from row one. Here, row one is a target that is say a thermal state, and z one is a well-known partition function. This problem is very important for many reasons. Thermal states naturally occur in physics, chemistry, biology, preparing them would allow us to compute thermal properties. They also appear in optimization, for example, when computing properties of low eigenvalue eigenvectors of Hermitian matrices. There are classical algorithms for simulating thermal states of quantum systems, but these are computationally intensive, and they only apply to a handful of quantum systems, as is the case of quantum Monte Carlo. And while the problem of simulating dynamics of quantum systems has been largely explored in quantum computing, there are only a few quantum algorithmic ideas for simulating thermal equilibrium, and these quantum algorithms have complexities which are prohibited. Our approach to preparing thermal states is based on the idea of fluctuation theorems. These are powerful computational techniques to study thermal equilibrium. They have been widely used in statistical physics and statistical mechanics. They relate thermodynamic quantities, such as free energy differences, which what we call the work distribution that arises in a non equilibrium process that I now explain. To illustrate fluctuation theorems, I'm going to consider the well known two time measurement scheme. Here, the assumption is that our n qubit system is initially in thermal equilibrium, but with the Hamiltonian H0, perhaps a simpler Hamiltonian than H1. If we perform a projective measurement of H0, measurement of the energy of this system, Follow by a projective measurement of H1, again, a measurement of the energy of the final system. These measurement outcomes are going to be random, and we're going to assign to that difference a random variable W that we call work. Now, since W is a random variable, we will have assigned a probability distribution P of W that illustrates here. Examples of fluctuation theorems are just this equality. It tells us that the expectation value of the exponential of minus P of W and the probability P of W coincides with the exponential of minus P times the free energy difference. This is again the ratio of the partition function. Even the second law of the thermodynamics can be formulated in terms of pro properties of P of W, namely the expected value of the work in P of W is always going to be lower bounded by the free energy difference. Now, an interesting observation is that now we can allow for any unitary operation, which we call a non-equilibrium unitary, to occur between the two measurements. This is a non-equilibrium unitary U because it takes the original system out of equilibrium. Now, this U will have the net effect of now transforming the original probability distribution into a new. However, fluctuation theorems are such that they apply for any such probability distribution, regardless of what U is. Now, the prior two-time measurement scheme does indeed prepare some quantum state, but this is not the thermal state that we are after. A simple update of that scheme will allow us to prepare a row one. This update is such that the measurement outcome of the second measurement is going to be accepted or rejected with certain probability that can be proportional to the exponential of minus beta w. If we do that, and now we will select on a set of accepted outcomes only, the final state of the quantum system can indeed be shown to be the target thermal state rho 1. 
what we're doing here is such that this reweighting approach assures the correct weights for the final state. Now, this scheme already provides a basic idea of a quantum algorithm for preparing thermostates, but it has several drawbacks that need to be addressed, and I will explain. Not to hear that because Q of W has always to be bounded by one, is a probability, we can choose our proportionality constant such that it coincides with the inverse of e to the minus beta W mean. W mean is a minimum work value that can arise in the two-time measurement scheme. By now, you might have thought that the two-time measurement scheme that I showed to prepare thermostates is related to well-known projection sampling method that is used to transform one probability distribution into another one. Now, the difference is that here it applies to the preparation of quantum states rather than sampling from classical probability distributions. The first challenge is coming from the expected runtime of the prior approach. Again, we are trying to transform a probability P of W into the new one, Q of W, that has this form. And one would expect that if these two probability distributions differ significantly, then the runtime is going to be large. Indeed, the expected runtime of the prior approach can be shown to be proportional to the maximum of the ratio between Q and P, the two distributions, which in our case scales as exponential of minus P times. W mean. Again, W mean is a minimum work value that can arise in a two time measurement scheme. This factor here can be extremely large. However, we can improve this runtime by using non equilibrium unitaries, such that now the transformation has to be done between two probability distributions which are closer to each other. What I mean by this is that we can pick the U such that this ratio here can be significantly smaller and the original ratio that we had, improving the runtime significantly. Possibilities of this non-equilibrium unitaries that improve these runtimes are discussed in our papers. The second challenge, drawback, which is related to the first one, is again, that the expected runtime can still be very large. However, this maximum here can occur at values of work which are irrelevant and can be discarded. This allows us to introduce the notion of a work cutoff. The work cutoff is such that certain properties of the distribution below that cutoff satisfy this condition. What I mean is that if we were to discard the samples coming from work values below the cutoff, then our scheme is such that we would still be preparing a state that is epsilon close to the target thermo state. Now, this can improve the random significantly because now we are trying to transform two probability distributions that only supported work values above the cutoff, and where this quantity now can be made as small as the exponential of minus beta times WL. This is going to be a significant improvement, especially if this cutoff is much larger than W mean, and this occurs in many instances. The third challenge is a common one for quantum algorithms based on measurements. Classically here, we were trying to transform one distribution to another one, but we can do so and now consider pure quantum states whose amplitudes encode the square root of the probability distributions. By working with these pure states rather than mixed states, these purifications is known to provide what are again proof runtimes are coming from a well-known technique in quantum algorithms called amplitude amplification. So to this end, we're going to assume access to purification of the thermal state of H0 to prepare a purification of the thermal state of H1. These purifications are these pure states psi0 and psi1 that now involve two n qubits rather than n. For this reason, we call this a two-copy measurement scheme. Our quantum algorithm then aims at performing the map from say zero to say one. Note that if we were to discard the second copy of these quantum states, then for say zero, the first copy could be in the thermal state row zero, while the first copy of say one would be in the target thermal state row one. The fourth challenge or drawback is coming from imprecise measurements. 
again, a two-time measurement scheme requires projective measurements of H0 and H1. Commonly in quantum algorithms, these are similarly using standard approach one called quantum phase estimation. But it is known that this approach has prohibitive complexity in terms of the precision parameter. Now, a nice observation is that if we were to work with a two-copy measurement scheme, we don't have to perform such measurements. Again, we are trying to transform psi zero, the purification of row zero, into psi one, the purification of row one. If we define a work operator now, which is H1 acting on first copy, minus H0 conjugate acting on the second copy, now this work operator has a same value. All possible work values can arise in a two-time measurement scheme. Then it is simple to show that say one and say zero are simply related by this exponential operator. Indeed, more generally, this is the relation that applies for any non-equilibrium unitary. The important thing here is that this exponential operator doesn't have to be implemented using measurements, and therefore we can bypass the quantum phase estimation approach. We are now ready to state the main result of our paper. There, we provide a quantum algorithm that prepares psi one from psi zero, and it is indeed based on the two copy measurement scheme. Our quantum algorithm uses the known equilibrium unitary U, the unitary that prepares psi zero and some other unitaries together with the inverses and control versions a number of times that it scales with exponential of minus beta WL over two times the square root of the ratio of the partition functions, which can be simply formulated in terms of the free energy difference in this way. Now, this quantity here is roughly the number of amplitude amplification rounds that we need in our quantum algorithm which is expected to be the dominant contribution to the overall complexity for most instances. This U here is simply a small time evolution under the work operator W that has to, is needed to implement the exponential operator. So the basic steps of our algorithm are again based on the observation that say zero and say one are related via sequence of three operations. First, U acting on the first copy of say zero, then the exponential operator, and then you conjugate acting on the second copy. Now, one and three are already unitary operations. However, the exponential operator in step two is non unitary, but it can be efficiently simulated using a unitary S that is a block encoding of the exponential. What I mean by this is that there is a unitary S such that when acting on this state, it effectively simulates the exponential operator on that state. And where here, this block of the unitary encodes an approximation of the exponential, but that approximation has only to be valid for work values, which are about the worker of own. In our paper, we describe what this S is as a linear combination of evolutions under W. Now, applying this S, or approximate exponential operator is going to reduce the amplitude of the desired state, which has to be increased. We're going to increase that amplitude by using the technique of amplitude amplification, which requires a number of amplitude amplification rounds that is scales with the inverse of the magnitude of the amplitude. That number of amplitude amplification rounds coincides with the scaling that I gave you in the prior slide, which is exponential minus beta times the work cut off divided by two times the square root of the ratio of the partition function. Nice observation here is that this runtime here coincides with the square root of the expected runtime of a rejection sampling algorithm that tries to transform P of U into P of U, and where we discard the samples which are below the cutoff. Having stated the main complexity of our quantum algorithm, we can now study work cutoffs for various examples. In this slide, I'm assuming that the non-equilibrium unitary is trivial, is the identity for general Hamiltonians, where H1 is simply a perturbation B at, on H0. We show that any work cut off that is upper bounded by this quantity here, where this is a spectral norm of the perturbation, is going to be sufficient for the case of community Hamiltonians. Any work cut off that satisfies this condition is sufficient. This is an improvement of the prior results since there is no dependence on the 
approximation error epsilon. We also analyzed the case of k locals in Hamiltonians. Again, we obtain a word cutoff that is upper bounded by quantities that depends on the trades of the terms in the Hamiltonian and the approximation error. Here, the dependence on precision is only logarithmic. Now, putting these results together, we show that the number of amplitude amplification rounds, again, the dominant complexity of our quantum algorithm, is upper bounded by the exponential of beta times the spectral norm of p times a function that depends on the approximation error. Now, when comparing this scaling with prior results, for example, Kulan and in 2009, Johari and Soma in 2017, whose scaling are exponential in beta times the spectral norm of H1, we see that we are obtaining significant improvements in the perturbative regime when the strength of B or the spectral norm of B is much smaller than the spectral norm of the whole Hamilton H1. In summary, I presented a new quantum algorithm for preparing thermal states based on the idea of fluctuation theorems. The dominant factor in the complexity can be determined properties of the work at all and the free energy difference in this way. Now we show that the quantum algorithm is especially useful in the perturbative regime when the magnitude, the strength of the perturbation is much smaller than the strength of the whole Hamiltonian. And when the initial state of size zero can be prepared efficient, for example, when H0 corresponds to a non-interactive model, we try to transform that thermal state into the thermal state of an interactive system. There are a number of upper open problems that mainly concern improvements of the complexity, for example, data bounds for Guacara, WL, and various examples would allow us to obtain better upper bounds in the complexity of our algorithm. And also finding good non-equilibrium process U. By good, I mean non-equilibrium unitaries can be implemented efficiently for improved runtimes. It's also an interesting problem. Thank you.